Well, I am incredibly honored to bring to you Clint Ober, and I've been following for a long time. I am, I am a grounder and have been for for many years, and oh, wow. I am so excited to talk to you, Clint, because. Many of the things that you're teaching is what I use to turn my son's autism around. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want moms all over the world who are following this podcast to know how important it is to reconnect to nature. And I see this in my community. Every single month, I see women turn their children around by doing the things that we're going to talk about today and not much more, mm -hmm. not much more than that. So it's powerful. But before we dive into the specifics of, of what is grounding, I remember I saw um, a video of you talking about how this all began for you. And it was something about the Native American uh, community and you being told that shoes are making us sick. Can you, can you take us back to the beginning? Okay, and then you can uh, intercept and bring me back anytime you want. Um, basically, I grew up in Montana uh, in, in the United States and um, I grew up in an agricultural environment. We had animals uh, and we raised crops and I spent a lot of time, some of my young, my friends growing up were Native American. And <clears throat> um, the event you're talking about is one day I was going get off the bus and we go home and and I go over to one of the kids and they a lot of them had teepees back then they had, they had the government came in and built them houses but they had their teepees in the backyard but they would sp spend more time in the teepees than they would in their houses but this was back in the 50s okay um, so anyhow uh, one night we came home and we were gonna go into one of the teepees and the mother said uh, take your shoes off they'll make you sick and I didn't have a clue what that meant. I just passed it off and didn't think too much about it. And that's where that came from. But after that, I spent, you know, you know, a, you know, a lifetime growing up in that in a in a natural or more nature type environment, and spending a lot of time alone, uh, because when you're taking care of cattle or various different uh, critters, you're just kind of out there babysitting, and. Um, so, but anyhow, that's, uh, and, and when I decided to leave that environment, I ended up in the communications industry, the cable television industry. And in that industry, you have to ground everything electrical. I mean, all of your equipment, all of your cable lines, and all of your amplifiers, receivers, transmitters. Uh, you had to ground everything so that you could maintain electrical stability and prevent noise or interference or to prevent uh, lightning for traveling on the lines and so on. And so that's kind of the foundation. I learned, uh, I spent 30 years grounding things. I, I had a business that actually specialized in grounding drops going into cable homes and so on. So I, I, it's second nature to me. And I didn't think too much about it until one day. And I'll let you take it from I me. Mean, where do you want me to go from here? <laughs> Cause yeah, I can... cause, yeah, I, I want to continue from there, but I want to make sure that everyone knows why this is relevant. So okay. uh, before we get into what is grounding and why is that we need cables via our feet to charge our inner batteries, what are some of the signs for kids and women and men uh, for that matter that we are ungrounded and that we need grounding? Okay. Um, I'll tell a little metaphorical story first. I mean, um, <clears throat> first of all, in nature, the animals who live in nature, that sleep on the ground, they're barefoot on the ground, they run on the ground. There's no such thing as cancer. There's no, such, no cardiovascular disease, no autism, lupus, MS, or any other autoimmune related health disorder. Um, <clears throat> on the other hand, all of the animals who live indoors with their owners, they all manifest similar autoimmune related health disorders as their owners. And 50% of the indoor animals die of cancer, which, which wow. cancer, cancer doesn't exist in nature. 
So basically what, what it's about is the earth is, has a slight negative charge and it's a little technical, but there's lots of information. Uh, anybody can go to the earthinginstitute.net. Uh, please watch the uh, earthing movie. It's free on YouTube and it discusses a little bit of all this. Uh, it gives you a little more essence so it's understandable. But anyhow, the earth itself is negative about 20 millivolts. And what that means is there's a, an abundance of free electrons that can move and reduce charge. Lightning is a good example. Static electricity discharge is a good example. Um, <clears throat> so when the human body touches the earth, the body itself equalizes with the earth and it becomes 20 volts negative. So that means, what that really means is you can't have charge in a grounded body. You, that's why we ground amplifiers, that's why we ground refrigerators or anything else is to prevent charge and to maintain electrical stability and safety. So <clears throat> when before um, 1960 about, it may have been a little different in Europe, but I don't think so. But especially in the late 50s, most people were barefoot or they wore leather sole shoes. Oh, and yeah. when, they wore, when they wore leather sole shoes, if it rained out, you had to take them off and carry them because shoes were expensive and you had to take care of them if you didn't have galoshes you know, and so on the rubber things. Um, so anyhow, in about 1960, there was a, a significant change that occurred in our environment. We started, we invented the inexpensive polymers, the plastics. And the first thing we did was uh, put them on our shoes. So now everybody could have shoes and you could wear them anytime, anywhere. You didn't have to worry about rain. You didn't have to worry about anything. And they were very, uh, inexpensive so everybody could afford shoes so in about 1960 <clears throat> the athletic community started the uh, like Nike the and there were others Adidas and so on <clears throat> excuse me but they uh, started making the athletic shoe the synthetic sole shoe so as soon as you put on a rubber sole insulative or plastic sole shoe then you you lose your equalization with the earth and you become positively charged like the atmosphere. So, <clears throat> so there was a big change. And <clears throat> if you go back to 1960, you know, 90% of the visits to a practitioner were for an inflammation related health disorder, for um, acute injury and childbirth. Today, 90, probably 95% of all visits to a practitioner are for a stress-related health disorder, meaning something is interfering with the immune system's ability to maintain health. So what's happening today is uh, over the last uh, 60 years, since 1960 to now, we've had a parabolic increase in the, in the wearing uh, rubber sole shoes, but we, we also have a parallel parabolic increase in diabetes, autism, lupus, MS, all of these autoimmune diseases. And autoimmune is, is kind of a misnomer. Uh, the immune system, it's an autoimmune dysfunction. The immune system is, is uh, for instance, um, like asthma or uh, I, I can cover anything. Um, if a person has a breathes in a pathogen or in a path, there's a pathogen in the body or a virus or whatever, then the immune system automatically goes on alert and it'll send white blood cells or various cytokines uh, over and they will encapsulate the pathogen and rip electrons from it and destroy it. That's how the immune system works. It's, it's, it oxidizes pathogens and oxidizes means uh, these are reactive oxygen models, uh, mod, uh, molecules, um, yeah. meaning they uh, are, sh sh you know, they're electrically charged. They're missing an electron. And so they go and steal an electron from the pathogen and that just what destroys the structure. And that's how the immune system works. And that's all perfect. And when the body is negatively charged or barefoot or grounded to the earth, 
then the body has lots of free electrons. So if there are any residual uh, reactive oxygen species left after the initial um, cascade, uh, then they will only, I mean, they're electrically charged, so they're only going to last uh, you know, a few nanoseconds. They're going to steal an electron from something else. That's any of the excess that are left over from the original response. So normally what they do is they'll steal an electron from an adjacent healthy cell, collateral damage thing, and <clears throat> that sends a message out to the immune system. The immune system says, okay, and sends another neutrophil or whatever white blood cell, and it goes and either destroys that cell because it's been damaged or helps to repair it, whatever. But <clears throat> then again, there's always excess reactive oxygen, and there's a shortage of free electrons or antioxidants uh, to reduce those excess radicals. And so then what happens is we get a chain reaction the immune system keeps sending uh, a, a, you know, a white blood cell to the, clean everything up and it in itself, in itself it's creating more damage. So it's, that's what is chronic inflammation. The immune system is dysfunctioning, meaning uh, it's actually creating a problem that it's trying to clean up. So it compromises the immune system. It's so busy fighting inflammation that it can't restore and maintain normal health. I, I hope that makes sense. Yes, it makes total sense. And we, we were designed to be sleeping on the ground and be outside naked all day long. And now we are indoor cats and our children often go through weeks without ever being barefoot because there's this fear of bacteria, fear of, I don't know, it's like we're when I walk barefoot, I, when I go for walks, I walk barefoot and I get approached by people who are so worried about my sanity and my health all the time. Right. When I, do that. Yes. I think if I was naked or in a bikini, I would get less attention. Yeah, that, but it, that. So what is going on and how did you get to understand during this journey how important it is for us to actually take those shoes off and get the shoes off of our kids as well? Well, uh, I, I probably need to continue the story a little bit. Um, the, <clears throat> in the, it, when I first recognized, it was quite by accident. It was just an intuitive thing. I was in um, Arizona and uh, I was working on a computer and it kept crashing. And I realized that when every time I touched the computer, there would be a static spark and that would cause the computer to glitch. This is back in 98. Okay, so back then things were different. <laughs> it's hard yes. to say that 20 years ago. But anyhow, the, uh, the computer kept crashing. And so I knew because of my background that I needed to be grounded or I needed to ground the computers to get rid of the static. So I did that. I laid a piece of copper across my desk because the computer wasn't, it didn't have a ground cord. It just had a regular two wire plug. So I put a piece of tape and grounded it to the electrical ground and then I would touch it before I would touch the computer and the computer worked fine. And so anyhow after that I was in the mode thinking about grounding and then I went outdoors and I pulled a big tour bus and there was a, a Japanese tour group and they were a little shorter in stature but they had the white Nike tennis shoes and it looked like they had just been to a mall and there was a special and everybody was wearing them because they were all white and, yeah. and I thought and it just intuitively it came out of nowhere I, I just asked I said I wonder if there's a consequence to us wearing these rubber soled shoes because when I was a kid we were always barefoot you couldn't get us into shoes until we had to go to school or church or a wedding or some special event and then as soon as school stopped you know, the first thing we did was lose the shoes <laughs> yeah. and down to the creek and, and uh, the way we'd go. But, <clears throat> but anyhow, um, I didn't know anything. I just, so I went home that night and I started measuring, uh, took a ground uh, voltmeter and I grounded myself to the earth and measured the, you know, the ohms of resistance you know, between myself and the earth, how much, what was going on here. And I found out that when you're not in touch with the earth, then your body is an antenna 
when you're not grounded, your body is an antenna. And so it attracts all of these environmental RF and um, electric fields. So, <clears throat> and I thought, well, that's probably not good, but I didn't know. Uh, so I started, so that night I went and got some more tape and I put it across my bed. I ruined a sheet doing it, but you know, it was three inch wide duct tape, just metal. And I laid it across the bed, taped it down, connected an alligator clip to it, to a wire and threw it out the window and grounded it to the earth. And then used a meter so I could test and show that I was zero, that I had no, that I was at earth potential. And <clears throat> that night I was just laying in bed and I was playing with the meter. And the next thing I knew, I woke up the next morning and the meter was beside me and I was still pretty much in the same position. The uniqueness, I mean, the, the significance of that was uh, I was 50 years old at the time, a little over 50, and I grew up on a ranch. I spent half my life skiing, playing a lot of tennis. I had back surgery, I had knee injuries, I had ankle injuries, I had every kind of injury you could think of, and I was suffering from a lot of chronic pain. In order to go to sleep, I would take Advil normally and uh, get up in the morning and take black coffee and and sometimes add bullet necessary. And I'm surprised I didn't get, kill myself from that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I didn't know any better at the time. And I had to go do what I did or had to do. But anyhow, so that went on for a little bit and I grounded a couple of my friends. And one of them had severe flaring arthritis in, in a wrist. And the next day he came over and he says, do you think this could have anything to do with uh, my arthritis because my arthritis is coming down. I said, no, I don't think so. I think it just helps you sleep better. Yeah. And so I, did, so I had all these questions. And this was uh, the first year back in 99. And then <clears throat> I went on the internet, which wasn't very friendly back then because um, you just didn't have much you could do. Uh, AOL, and then you, I mean, the best way to get data was to do, use Nexus Lexus or data retrieval systems. And that was a little challenging when you're out in the middle of Arizona. But <clears throat> anyhow, so I uh, went down to the university in Arizona and tried to get information there to find out why, because when I ground myself, pain goes away and I sleep better. And I went and talked to a few of the pro professor down there and we went through the medical library. And there was no information whatsoever other than you have to ground a patient before you operate before you open the skin. And that's to prevent static electricity. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> because if it gets in to the body, it can ca create a cardio event. Wow. <clears throat> so that was the only thing I learned there. And then I went out, so that was to reduce static electricity on the body. And then <clears throat> also in um, you know, the software industry, computer industry, everybody who works in those factories has to be grounded with a wrist strap or a smock, so when they're touching or working on uh, electric, electronic components or software, uh, they don't discharge a static spark. They have to be grounded at all times. But there's nothing about health benefits. And so <clears throat> I went on for another couple of months and then finally I, I kept grounding and I kept feeling better and my pain all went away and a couple other people. And I said, well, you know, this is real, this is significant. I need to figure out what this is. So I went out to uh, UCLA uh, in California and thought, well, I'll go there. They must know, they know everything out there. So I went out there and I met with them and they kind of, um, you know, kind of, they, they said, you expect us to believe that you can put a nail in the ground, tie a wire around it, and then tire it over a wire on somebody's toe uh, that they're gonna sleep better? And I said, well, yes, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and so they pretty much laughed me off campus. But I had a lot of fun with them. I learned a lot from them and <clears throat> they think differently. Uh, I think electrical, everything is electrical yeah. first. Yeah. And, and they think everything is, you know, is this cascade of nerves and all these things. And they're all, I mean, we're both right. I mean, they're both, <clears throat> they're both involved. So, but anyhow, they didn't really understand what I was trying to come up with. So anyhow, I, after visiting with them, I took a couple of the students and they helped me put together a study. So I went out and I grounded, uh, we put together a study where we ground, where we uh, found 60 subjects. We grounded 30 of them with real grounding mats and 30 of them without, with uh, grounding mats that weren't really grounded. The significance of that 
the reason I want to make that that's how I discovered this is yeah. in that in that study um, <clears throat> there was I had a nurse that was administrating the study and so she would pick every day uh, go install two people a day she would pick the ones out of a bowl who was grounded and who was not grounded and so nobody knew <clears throat> about uh, so it was a blind <clears throat> so anyhow I went out and I would ground the people and and take some basic information give it to them and then just keep going until the study was done but one day I went out and I was grounding two people and they both had active pets one was an 80 year old man who had severe arthritis and all kinds of chronic health disorder I mean, he looked like a mess and <clears throat> I thought at that time because I would always measure the electric fields and the RF fields in the environment and then I'd record them and in my mind that was what was causing a lot of these problems because I got so much better and <clears throat> and when you're grounded you're shielded you're naturally protected from uh -huh. RF and ELF and <clears throat> most people don't know that uh, they, they they think that while well, it attracts electric fields they go through you and go to the earth it's not that way the earth energy comes up to the pad you touch the pad then the, then you and are enveloped uh, in the earth potential earth charge ground <clears throat> and then you uh, you have these excess electrons so um, you you're part of you're electrically part of the earth you're one in the same with the earth and the earth is infinitely large and electric electrical travels at speed of light almost so you know there's just it's a phenomenon that's challenging to understand but anyhow so these two people I went out there and so I went to this gentleman's house and I measured the electric fields in his bedroom there were none he had an adobe home brick adobe um, no electrical outlets on the side of the bedroom where his bed was no lamps nothing just the bed up against the wall on the other side he had one lamp no chargers nothing and he had a brick floor yeah uh, and then he had a metal bed that was touching the brick floor <laughs> and so when you he would sit on his bed and I would measure the electric fields the antenna effect on his body and it was just noise just nil it was like 20 millivolts uh, <clears throat> insignificant on the other hand uh, so I, I said this is unfortunate because I'm not going to get any results here it's just too bad that we're wasting a live pad on somebody that doesn't have electric field. so that afternoon I went over and <clears throat> grounded a lady who was in her 80s and she had flaring arthritis in both hands she couldn't hold the meter she couldn't do anything all she could do is sit on the bed <clears throat> and she had in her bedroom she had heating pads she had every electrical device you could think of and her uh, the electric field charge on her body was near 20 volts it was just wow. outrage, outrageous and I thought wow this is going to be really good because this person has got extreme uh, you know, uh, environmental uh, electric fields and so on so anyhow I grounded her and in order to ground her I had to put a patch on one hand and I put a patch on the other the one um, <clears throat> connected it to the meter that would measure the antenna effect the voltage and then I would ground her with the other one out the window and then we'll go down to near zero and so I knew everything was working so it was okay and then I left and I went back to the office what was interesting though I need to say is <clears throat> she had arthritis in both hands and I put a patch on each hand and in one hand she said well this one's working great and this one isn't working meaning the pain was coming down this was in wow. five minutes within five minutes Wow and I said well it's not supposed to do that and I so I took the patch and I took the, the one going to the meter and put it on this hand and this one put it the one going to the earth put it on the other hand and a few minutes later she said now it's starting to work and so that was uh, something I learned and I didn't know uh, so on my way home that night I went and got some electrode patches at a, a medical supply store and gave it to a few other friends and I said take this and try this and let me know what it does next day I called them up and they said it's the magic pain patch and that's how it got its name but anyhow so <clears throat> anyhow a month goes by and the nurse is going out and doing the final interview collecting the anecdotal data and, and the measurements 
And I accidentally looked one day at those two papers when they were sorting them out on a table, and they both had the same results. And I said, there's something really wrong here because this guy had no environmental electric fields, no RF to speak of, and this person had the most I'd ever seen anywhere. So this must have been the universe talking to me. I don't know. <laughs> so anyhow, then I thought, well, and so then I went and I started playing around and started doing tests uh, with the electric field exposure, magnetic field exposure, uh, using capacitors, doing all kinds of tests to try to quantify what reduces pain. And then I realized one day it's contact with the earth that is reducing the pain, reducing the grounding the body and reducing the EM, whether there's EMF in the room or not, it's not going to reduce the inflammation. Contacting contact with the earth alone. So then I, that set me on a whole new course. And we discussed that a little bit earlier, but that's when I learned <clears throat> that the earth is negative. I knew it anyway, but that's when I realized that the body becomes 20 volts negative, And then like an amplifier or anything else is grounded. There can't be any charge. So then I had to figure out what charge was, what caused pain. And this was where it got kind of interesting. After doing that study, I went to San Diego and uh, uh, and, and did a, a study with an um, anesthesiologist. And he had just retired and he was bored and he needed something to do. He says, I don't think there's anything to what you're doing, but I think, but I'd like to see. And I'll you know, entertain you and teach you a little bit about studies. And so we grounded a group of women and I think four guys. And what we did is we measured cortisol every four hours for 24 hours. So we had a circadian profile. Then we grounded them for like 30 days, six weeks, something like that. Then we went back, measured their cortisol again, every four hours for 24 hours. And then we also measured heart rate variability. <clears throat> and, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So anyhow, when we got done with that study, what we found is that the, and this is all in the book, I, you know, the Earthing book, and it's, there's studies on the Earthing Institute that show all of this. But anyhow, the circadian profile before uh, everybody's cortisol together looked like there's spaghetti. It was kind of all over the place. Younger women were high anxiety, elevated cortisol. Uh, older ladies had exhausted adrenals, low cortisol. <clears throat> but after 30 days, they all came together and synchronized into a perfect band. So then we realized that, okay, cortisol, I mean, grounding reduces stress in the body because it's normalizing uh, cortisol secretion profiles. And, but we didn't know why. <laughs> we didn't know, understand the mechanism. What's the tie between um, ground being negatively charged and cortisol, which is a master hormone, fight or flight hormone. And <clears throat> common sense would tell you that your cortisol, if your cortisol is active, you're stressed. Mm. You know, you're under a fight or flight and you've got uh, activity. Um, cortisol normalizing means that your the parasympathetic sympathetic is quieting down, parasympathetic is coming up, and then the heart rate variability balances, and then you have, you know, you feel better, look better, and all that stuff. So anyhow, <clears throat> Dr. Golly, who was the uh, lead researcher in that study, uh, Stephen Sinatra, who was a cardiologist from back east, from uh, New England, um, was visiting or at a seminar. And he said, let's go talk to him. He's a cardiologist. They understand electrical. Let's go tell him what we're doing and what we found and see if he can help us understand the electrical phenomena. So we went over and talked to him. And after a discussion and grounding him and a few of his friends and just playing a little bit, he says, Clint, he says, you know, if you're reducing inflammation here, I mean, pain here, he says, you need to be in, uh, researching inflammation because pain is a byproduct of inflammation. You cannot have pain unless you have inflammation. Well, back then, nobody was using the word inflammation. This is around 201, 202. And it wasn't until 204 that Ritger and the, the researchers from Boston, Mass, they came out with this study uh, about inflammation. They had the cover of Time magazine that showed the body on fire and said inflammation, <clears> their <throat> body on fire. And it was then that everybody began to understand 
<clears throat> but as soon as that came out, I and I, I said, okay, if um, the cause of inflammation, I mean, all of these modern health issues, what they were really saying is, you don't have cancer, you don't have lupus, you don't have MS, you don't have any of these health disorders. What you have is chronic inflammation that manifests differently in different people, meaning your immune system is compromised because it's busy fighting inflammation. So your immune system is compromised. So <clears throat> uh, depending on your genetics and your environment, some people will manifest as cardiovascular challenges. Some people will develop cancer. Some people MS, some people lupus because they're all inflammation related health disorders. So to, in order to prevent these, you have to reduce inflammation because you can't have these disorders unless you have chronic inflammation for an extended period of time. And that's validated in the animal world. So <clears throat> anyhow, so that led to uh, us understanding, uh, when we started studying inflammation, that's when I first recognized one day that a neutrophil releases reactive oxygen uh, on a pathogen and that's what destroys the pathogen. As soon as I heard the word reactive, then I knew the immune system's electrical because reactive means it's electrically charged. It's missing an electron. So the immune system is an electrical, operating with electrical phenomena. So that's when um, we put it together and said, okay, so when you, <clears throat> obviously what's happening when you ground the body, because we're no longer naturally grounded, we're wearing shoes sleeping in beds above the earth and so on. And I'm not gonna give them up, but I, but I need to fix them so I'm grounded when I'm using them. But anyhow, um, so we recognized that before 1960, none, most of these health disorders did not exist. It's like autism was one in, I forget what it was, 50,000 or something back then, or yeah. 100. Uh, and then uh, when I started in 2000, it was like one in, 6,000, 10,000, I don't remember all the numbers anymore. But <clears throat> anyhow, so we recognized that um, we made, I mean, our hypothesis was very simple, that we lost ground, we lost our electrical ground. And that <clears throat> um, uh, disturbed the, I mean, or prevented the immune system from being electrically stable. Meaning if you're grounded, the, the immune system can release all kinds of reactive oxygen. If there's any left over, you have so much free electrons in your body, it's going to instantly reduce and return them, uh, neutralize them. So they can, there's no damage, there's no collateral damage. Um, but the, in fact, the one thing that really is important that we learned, because we did like, we've done now like 24 peer reviewed published studies that touch on all of the aspects of the effects that grounding has on physiology. But the most important one, was when we grounded the body and we measured blood, we took a you know blood and looked at it under a dark field, light field, uh, and we saw a lot of rouleau formation. But as soon as we grounded people, then the red blood cells all separated. So what we learned was we, we increased the negative surface charge on red blood cells by 300%, almost 300% when you're grounded. So that means that <clears throat> they equalize with the earth. The earth has a negative surface charge. Now the red blood cells have a negative surface charge. So now like little negative magnets, they repel each other. Mm -hmm. The blood cells, the blood viscosity normalizes and the blood can get in and out of capillaries, oxygenate the tissues properly and give up electrons without destroying the red blood cell because it has so many. It can pick, I mean, the red blood cells circulate through your body every minute. And so we learned a lot. So we, rec we recognize that what happens is when you're grounded, then every cell in your body is negatively, it has a negative surface charge. And that prevents these reactive oxygen species from damaging healthy cells. Where if you are short electrons because you're insulated from the earth and you're breathing oxygen and you don't have enough redox potential, can't eat enough blueberries, <laughs> Uh, and so on, then, <clears throat> then that's what sets up this chronic inflammation, the fire of inflammation, creates this low grade fire in our bodies. Then the immune system has to choose, what do I save, how do, how do I, because it's so busy fighting the fire that it itself is creating. And that's how the immune system is compromised. And <clears throat> I'll just touch on it. I, I do work a lot with 
families who have autistic children that I have for 20 years. And what have you seen in when, when you've done this work? What is your experience when it comes to grounding and how important it is for autism? Yeah. The earlier, the better the, that you catch it. But <clears throat> autism is an inflammation related health disorder that's in the literature now published around the world and the last four years has been lots of studies coming out <clears throat> and uh, it's really produced by a primarily by a cytokine storm which is a massive immune response and so something triggered that immune response now uh, i've heard ever, for 20 years i've heard everything under the sun but again i'm just an observer I don't yeah. know enough. I don't know enough about it to be uh, make a say with certainty it's this, it's that, or it's whatever. But the observations are quite simple. Um, <clears throat> if you have, for instance, uh, you are uh, allergies or asthmatic, if you breathe in some particles, then you'll have a massive cytokine storm. That's where the immune system is in there trying to clean up the pathogens and so on, but there are so many of them that there's an excess amount and then they start creating inflammation and then they start damaging the lungs. Okay, so if you ground instantly, that stops instantly. So um, can you, <clears throat> just, just before you go on, can you explain to me why, so I have moms come to me and all I tell them to do is, before you do anything else, don't change anything, but get your child outside every day and take their shoes off and they do that. And within a week or two, I have seen children go from nonverbal to verbal, from not wanting to bond to bonding, from picky eating to uh, wanting to eat whatever. So really literally magical things happening within weeks. Can you explain how and just give moms some encouragement to actually just get out there? So right. simple. So here's, here's my simple observations and cowboy logic. But remember, I've done a lot of studies where we have grounded athletes uh, at the University of uh, Oregon and Eugene, where we would <clears throat> burn their calves with various different types of exercises and induce inflammation in the body. Some of them would be grounded, some of them wouldn't be grounded, but they would we would monitor their blood and their recovery for a period of uh, seven days and they would all be and eat the same meals, they have the same blood draws, everything. These studies, they're, they're called delayed onset muscle soreness studies, and they're on the earthinginstitute.net. So what we wanted to learn is how inflammation works and then what happens when you're grounded. And it's because inflammation doesn't manifest the same way in a grounded subject as it does in a non-grounded subject. Normally with DOMS, after three or four days, you can't walk. It's like when you go out and work in the garden, do a lot of work, uh, first warm day, and then two, three days later, you can't move because you're so sore and inflamed. Okay, <clears throat> so when you're grounded, that doesn't manifest that way. Okay, so what that taught me was, I looked at the, at the children, and a lot of boys are more rambunctious they're more wild, they're more energetic than the girls are. And we have an increased amount of autism in boys here anyway, than yeah. girls. Yeah. Okay, so I, in my mind, I said, well, that's just like these, these students that we grounded and did the, uh, burned the calves and created inflammation in their body. Three or four days later, they couldn't walk. But so what happens when you exercise, you create a lot of inflammation in your body. If you do not ground it out, then it's going to start oxidizing healthy tissue and create damage in the body. So I had that corollary and then various other ones. But basically what happens, um, <clears throat> there is an incident. It could be, uh, you know, like when I was a kid, we had you got measles and then you got mumps a month later and you got rubella something a month later, but you never got a bunch of things at one time. And today <clears throat> we have, um, all of these shots, all these that we inoculate the children with. And now there's up to 20, 10, 20, 30 different things at one time. So you inject these into the body. So the immune system is trying to identify all of them so it can build defenses against all of them, but there's so many of them. 
So I think what happens is it would create a super cytokine storm. I know that's what it is. It's a cytokine storm because I've seen it. So how do you put a cytokine storm out? It's very simple. You ground them. If you if they get grounded in the first place, you can't have it because with the uh, with the individuals who have autism, I mean, not autism, um, asthma, um, if they're in a, you know, in a, in a spiral and an attack, just ground them, take them out and put their feet on the earth or throw them in a swimming pool. It stops immediately. And I have to add this because in autism, there's a lot of them that have seizures. Yeah. Especially the petite mal seizures and so on. And <clears throat> I have a doctor over in Laguna Beach area who uh, works, specializes in that. And <clears throat> he called me up one day and he said, I want you to do an experiment for me. He said, I want you to ground this child who has uh, every, I mean, she has seizures, chronic seizures. And I said, sure, I'll do anything. And I went over there and I uh, grounded the child. Sure enough, she calmed down. And so in order to, we grounded her bed and then we grounded the tub, we grounded the, we made a little bracelet that she could wear when she was watching TV, there's grounded. And then we, and then we instructed the parent that whenever this child is looking like a seizure, take, if they're not close and they can't be grounded, take your shoes off, put them on the earth and, and see what happens. And um, so anyhow, she had my, grounding reduces and prevents the seizures. It stops wow. them. Wow. Um, even in older people, uh, you know, they have like brain seizures and so on. They will have them, and but they get better and better and better as the inflammation is reduced, the brain inflammation. So it's all kind of, um, it's all related. I mean, the body's electrical. Everything in the body is, every cell is electrical. Uh, all of our organs are, they, we, they all function with uh, frequencies and pulses and electric. And so it, when we have all this, um, you know, it, it's just the body is used to being grounded. We evolved in yeah. a grounded state. Yes. And, and, and so, but anyhow, I, all I can say is I, just my observations are that these children, and to me, they're the most important because if we don't fix this, something has to happen. And, you know, because you take the average, I, what I deal with is the average 35 to 55 year old lay woman. She is dealing often with um, a kid on this spectrum. She's dealing with her mother is on a half a dozen meds and her health is compromised. Yeah, that's absolutely. That is who I deal with day in, day out. They are the only people that ground themselves or by grounding stuff. The older people, you know, they go to a doctor. The younger people, they just don't know. Um, <clears throat> so anyhow, when we ground her and she gets some benefits, the first thing she does is ground her mother and her children. And she doesn't care about anybody else because it's it works and it's inexpensive and it just takes a burden. Re so reduces them. We, we need to get into how to do the grounding when you live in the city. I just wanted to give you an example. I talked to a mom today who's uh -huh. been grounding for a couple of months now. She had chemotherapy after cancer and she had neuropathy in her feet so she couldn't feel anything. But yes. she would be grounding anyway. And she just recently noticed, wow, when I'm standing on the grass, I can actually feel the grass now. She. This is, and the doctor had told her, if it's not back within six months, you'll never have those feelings back. And now she has just by doing that. Isn't that yep. incredible? This is nature. This is earth. This is who we are. We have disconnected from nature. We have insulated ourselves from nature. There's these invisible, uh, invisible rhythms and, and uh, mechanisms. I mean, it's like, Everything on, on the planet Earth is electrically connected. Everything that's alive, every bug, every microbe, every bird, every everything that's alive on the Earth is electrically connected until you yes. put shoes shoes on and start sleeping in a, on a foam bed. You know, It's so beautiful. Well, we, we are all sleeping grounded. And the question I get from a lot of moms is, so I, I live in the sticks, but many of the moms live in cities and they don't, yes have access to right. sand and w when is it safe to ground in the city and what do you do if you don't have access to nature okay um <clears throat> when you say safe to ground in the city 
uh, basically in, you know, in England, most of those areas, you have perfect ground in your electrical systems. What so, about U.S.? We have a lot of U.S. moms listening in. Uh, homes built in the U.S. before 1970, you have to make sure that they have a good ground because they remodeled the homes, they put in new electrical outlets, but there's no electrical wire behind the outlets connecting them to ground. But every product that the companies I'm involved with send out, they always send out an electrical uh, checker to test it, to make sure they're the, uh, the electrics, the ground, they're properly configured, the uh, ground wires and the electrical wires. Um, <clears throat> so anyhow, you have to have a ground in, in most homes built in the United States after 1970, they all have perfect grounds. It's code. I mean, it's electrical code. So they have to be grounded. Uh, so there is a ground there. But under any circumstances, uh, here we have a lot of people that prefer to use a ground rod. It's just an 11 inch ground rod. You stick it in the yard and run a wire in through the window or the door. And it's got a stainless carrier in it, so you can't cut it. And um, close the window on it and then plug your device into it and you're grounded. Um, so and that's one mechanism. So the homes built before 1970, if they haven't been remodeled, rewired, you may need a ground rod. Um, <clears throat> so, but other than that, you can use a ground rod or you can connect to the electrical okay. ground. Yes, you can even connect and to you a need coal. To do you need to turn off? You need to turn off the electricity. So you need to plug it in and turn it off, right? Um, if it's like switch. No, that's not how it, I mean, that, that's what everybody does. And a lot of people, yeah. there's a lot of people out there that make their living selling EMF mitigation, you know, to reduce the electric fields in the homes and so on. And that's why I told you the story about the first study we did. We learned that EMFs were not causing the problem. And I can get into that. I can get into that yeah. a little bit more, and maybe I should right now, <clears throat> um, and then finish this. I mean, and back up here a little bit because there are many ways you can ground uh, in your home with nothing other than what you have, what exists. But <clears throat> I, I often tell a you know a little story about you know in the, in because I grew up on a ranch in Montana. Um, we have uh, lots of years to be lots of rabbits. And these big jackrabbits. Am I okay on time? Am I yes, okay? On... Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So the the jackrabbits they have the, these big eared jackrabbits. So those years that there was a lot of jackrabbits, there'd also be a lot of coyotes. So the jackrabbit, I mean, the rabbit is sitting there just eating grass like nothing ever happened, and then all of a sudden the ears come up and over here is a coyote sneaking up on him. So the coyote lunches, the rabbit springs. And then he goes zigzag back and forth across the pasture. Doesn't run very far because the coyote who's chasing him, he will run out of energy faster mm -hmm. than the rabbit. So the coyote will drop and sit there and be panting. And the rabbit will run just a little bit further, conservation of energy. And he'll keep an eye on the coyote. And then <clears throat> the rabbit is sitting there. You can see him. He's quivering. And then all of a sudden he has this big shake. And then he goes mm -hmm. back to eating grass like nothing ever happened and um, <clears throat> so what happened is the when the coyote attacked the rabbit the, the um, fight or flight cortisol skyrocketed and so after the after the chase the body was full of cortisol full of inflammation but you can just see because it's sitting there in grass well grounded and <gasps> it releases that excess charge on the body mm. calms down the nervous system, quiets the fight or flight, and then it goes back to eating like nothing ever happened. So, wow. <clears throat> so in in modern life, we all have a fight or flight system. It's innate in us. We can, if somebody drops a glass and it breaks the first thing that happens is cortisol spikes uh, the phone rings uh, you open a bill from the mail <laughs> before you know whatever it is uh, a child missed the bus I mean whatever you know um, all of the issues that go on in life they're all spiking our cortisol our fight or flight because normally we're quiet content more like the animal world and um, so anyhow our bodies 
we're forever, we, I call them coyotes. We have the, all these coyotes after us all the time, driving to work, uh, the boss, the work, the customers, everything that goes on in life. I mean, there's just pushing the system. So what happens is the parasympathetic is usually releases hormones to modulate and soften that initial sympathetic response that starts the cortisol. And, and that's fine. And that's in, and that's what happened to the rabbit, you know, the cortisol, the, I mean, there was a modulation there that dampened that sympathetic response. So now if, if you're in a chronic state where you have a chronic, you're living in a chronically elevated sympathetic lifestyle, meaning things are at you all the time, then the parasympathetic, which is based on adrenals, your adrenals are going to become exhausted. And then all of a sudden the sympathetic overdrives more cortisol. And now you become, uh, start to become anxious and irritable and sensitive. And then the more, um, fight or flight you have then the more cortisol so it's a vicious cycle and the, the if you maintain elevated if you have a chronically elevated sympathy system, you're going to create a lot of inflammation in the body mm-hmm. and then you're going to compromise the immune system because the immune system is busy trying to put this inflammation put this fire out inflammation is a fire and and so anyhow so what happens is most moms today can't put the coyote at bay because you've got your own mom who's got all of her problems. I mean, aging, taking care of them. You have your children who have all of their issues. Uh, many still have a husband and um, all of the issues that go there and the money and the survival and the meal. I mean, just everything that goes on. So she's forever in this state. So um, then that's why the lupus, the MS, the fibromyalgia, this is all related. And then any number of other inflammation related health disorders. So, so the reason I tell, so I I try to, so the issue here is what's causing the inflammation. You know, part of it is um, the food we eat, part of it's this, part of it's that. But when we never ground out that sympathetic charge, that cortisol, then it oxidizes and it feeds the inflammation. So oftentimes we can put the fire out. And I'm speaking of a 35, 40 year old woman here. We can put the fire out, but she is feeding the fire. So she's got to stay grounded in order to maintain. To and and where, does, where does the non-native EMF pollution come in to play here? Okay, the, the EMF. So. If your adrenals are exhausted, if you have blown adrenals, then you're going to become an electrically sensitive. You can sense the wind, you can sense temperature, sound, you can sense these fields. And that's going to make you say, oh my good, I got to get rid of the electric fields. Well, the electric fields are not your problem. Your problem is that your adrenals are, are exhausted. Because if your adrenals weren't exhausted, then you're, you have a system that modulates all of this. And because most people are not electrically sensitive. Okay. So, I know. I, I know. I'm throwing something different out there, um, and I'm not against. I think you should reduce EMF, but <clears throat> look at your adrenals first. Yeah. Reduce the things in your life that are. That re, try to eliminate the coyotes. Find a way to put a fence, a coyote fence, up, and and prevent this. You know, this constant state of uh, chronic sympathetic whatever so but the emfs they become an environmental stressor once you've blown your adrenals Mm -hmm. and i know that for a fact because i've dealt with this for 20 years i never say anything to the people that i'm actually working with but it's like it's like um, if i ask somebody who has ms i said you know were you born with ms no uh you're you're 35 years old how did you what, what, what happened in your life that caused MS to manifest? I don't know. I just did one day. And I said, one of my relatives has it too. So I think it's in the families. Well, MS is not hereditary. Okay. So predisposition maybe, but not, you know, so, mm-hmm. so anyhow, then you ask her, said, well, what happened in your life to cause this to manifest? And I did this by accident the first time. And about five or 10 minutes later, the, the woman says, oh my God, she said, that's when my son died. 
I ended up getting a divorce. We lost our house. All these things I just never recovered, and and then all of a sudden I have MS. So that's the coyote. Yeah. Taking it, you know, taking her to the ground, and <clears throat> so um, anybody who has EMF, I mean, uh, you know, you need to put, you need to clean up. You know, you, you, we all need to ground. We have to first of all put the fire out. If that's yeah. nothing more than going outdoors and standing on the concrete, you've got to put the fire out. Yeah. Um, uh, then you have to start taking inventory and, and grounding your mind. Your what are the things that are causing you to be off center all the time and out of balance, and what are the stresses in your life that are that are. Um, Compromising your health, and if you you have to stop and look at that because if you don't, it's going to take your life. Yes. And, and, and so on. So it's about balance, and, and I always say, you go to nature. Just look in nature. Go sit on a rock and watch. Look at the natural world. And take you know take that in. The trees are healthy. The animals are healthy. The bugs are healthy. Birds are healthy. And here we are, humans. What's wrong with us? Mm. We're different than animals. We're not. We're mammals. <laughs> Um, and so something is different. So our, we we are all suffering from immune system dysfunction. Mm -hmm. Our immune system is electrical, so we need to ground the body so that the immune system can return to normal, so it can release its reactive oxygen without oxidizing healthy tissue. And how long do you need to ground for daily? And how do you ground indoors safely? So you okay. said what I I heard that you need to plug it in and you need to turn off the switch. That's, that's not yeah. true. You, you can or you don't have to. It doesn't matter because the ground is not connected to the electrical. It's adjacent, but it is connected to the earth. There may be a little bit of noise on it, but this isn't. That noise is there anyway because your body is an antenna. So okay. any noise that's on that wire is already in the room, and because you can measure EMFs in your room on your body. So, so you can get grounding sheets and grounding mats for when you're watching TV or when you're by by the computer. You can get grounding shoes. Yes, there's all kinds of things out there, but I'll tell you where to start. Yeah. The the first thing to do if you have grass, or a yard, or bare earth, uh, it may be cold even. Take a blanket. Doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> go outdoors. If you can't walk and you're not used to it, then find a spot where you can put your feet on the earth. Sit on a chair. Make sure you don't have too much sun, but you want a lot of sun because you don't get enough sun either because you live indoors yeah. now, and that's another yeah. the other the other half of this problem. <laughs> Uh, yes. But anyhow, just go out there and sit uh, for 30 minutes and notice mm -hmm. the changes in your body. Then, if you notice anything, then do it again, uh, at least twice a day. That is going to at least ground out the cortisol and help you calm down. Do it before sleep. Uh, do it first thing in the morning, uh, or whenever you get stressed, go outdoors and ground. Um, if you don't have concrete or anything else, then take just pure. I mean, uh, yard. Then just pure concrete. Just your sidewalks are grounded. I mean, they're on okay. the earth. They're on the earth. They're, they hold moisture. Um, <clears throat> so when you touch the concrete, you're going to be just as grounded as, in most cases, as you are by putting wow. your feet in the dirt. Okay. So you might look a little odd. Maybe you have a back porch. <laughs> maybe you have a base. Maybe you have a basement with. Concrete basement. Uh, go downstairs and find yourself a little place. Uh, <clears throat> other things to do. A lot of people here, they'll build a little sandbox, just a place where they can sit, put a chair next to it, put their feet in the sand, cover their feet, and just be grounded. That uh, will work, even though it's on a, a non-conductive surface. Or no, what? it has to it has to be on the sidewalk or on the earth okay. itself. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> okay. So th those are the things that you can do outdoors, and they are yeah. free. The things you can do indoors, if you have cast iron plumbing or copper plumbing, cold water pipes are usually copper. They're not plastic. Uh, hot water is plastic. But take a take a take a hot bath. Wow. And make, because your the drain is connected. To if it's if if it's not a plastic drain, yeah. If it's the old cast iron, then it's grounded. The cold water pipe in your in your home are grounded. You can touch them. Just put your hand on a cold water faucet. It's going to 
these things are just these are not going to solve your problems but these are things where you can sense ground you can get ground and go wash your hands in cold water mm. um, and, and you know when the water's running close to the faucet um, <clears throat> so there's little things you can do to experience this now people whose health is very compromised um, they we here we have what we call um, a patch system just a, an electrode patch with a 15 foot coil cord and it's connected to a ground or to a ground rod and then you just put the patch in the middle of the hand and mm -hmm. just sit there with it what will happen is your blood circulates once a minute in your body on the average and so as the blood circulates 15 30 times then all of a sudden your 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 if you have cold fingers cold feet they warm up your if you have poor circulation in the end then they'll turn normal they'll rather than blue they'll turn normal uh, your respiration will change your uh, demeanor will change because the you, the you had a lot of stress you mm -hmm. have a lot of stress everybody has a lot of stress they think it's normal they don't know that it's not until they get grounded but anyhow when you ground then just by grounding putting a patch in one hand uh, or wearing one of these grounded bracelets some of them don't work very good but on any of them what you what you I like the patch better because then it's going to normalize your blood viscosity put out the fire of inflammation and for the first time your immune system gets a gets a respite and it can go back into what it normally does but the problem yeah. is, is if you have a lot of um, you know oxidative stress oxidative damage you never have you know your body's not charged with Uh, free radicals your body's um, you're, you're charged with the free radical damage oxidation uh, fire burns uh, so <clears throat> um, but anyhow you put the fire out then the, the immune system can go back to work but once you get ungrounded uh, it's like a lady who has ms we used to ground them for eight hours during sleep they would get great benefit but by 10 o'clock they started going downhill ground them till um, <clears throat> two o'clock Then we had 16 hours of grounding, eight hours of non-grounding, made significant recovery. Eventually, yeah. they can go out and live a normal life. So sleeping grounded on a grounding sheet? That's the most important because mm. there's no compliance. You put it in your bed. The ones we have over here that I like the best are those uh, carbon ones, carbon black. They, you put it under the sheet on your mattress put your sheet over the top of it, uh, plug it in. All you do is lay down and go to sleep. There's no compliance. You come home the next night, you just go to bed. You don't have to do anything. And it will ground the stress out of your body for eight hours at a time. And then, and then the mats that you can sit with when you're by the computer and watching TV? Yes, um, <clears throat> those are just a, um, I think they're 14 inches by 39 inches, something like that. And we call them a universal mat. You can put your feet and put them on the floor, put your feet on it, put a desk, put your hands on it, put it on a chair, sit on it. And you can actually roll it up, take it home and sleep and sleep on it. Okay, so that's a cheap solution then. But yeah. is there anything you should watch out for? Because there's a lot of products out there. there. Is there any well, way to know whether what's good and what's bad? I, I can't test all of them. I know that <clears throat> In I kind of set the standard, and I worked with the NIH, the California Health Services, and others, and they said, you know, you have to set the standards. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of followed the what we call the ESD industry, electrostatic discharge industry, which is the computer industry and electronic software. And so <clears throat> what I did is I made sure that we always used a cord that has a resistor in it, uh, and we used the one meg resistors, but we decided to go down to 100K or 200K resistors because uh, you get a better uh, flow of electrons. The, <clears throat> the one meg re resistors work good, but they are a little slower. They dissipate static electricity and they will equalize the body with the earth eventually. But, but anyhow, so we always have a resistor. What the resistor does is if there's an electrical event of any kind, it slows the movement of charge It's the word resist, it resists the flow to the point that you can't feel it, that it's safe, that it will do no harm. It'll blow so, the resistor. 
And what about 5D? Because that's something that people are worried about. They hear that it can jump conduct onto the grounding sheet. And what about if it's lightning outside? Any any danger there in the 5G environment? Uh, um, <clears throat> the 5G is a little more broadband than 4G. And in, in, in a few years, you're going to have 10G. Um, <clears throat> this is not the problem. I mean, it, it's an environmental stressor. I will not, I mean, that is that for sure. But you cannot protect against it. I mean, you would have to, mm -hmm. you would have to rebuild your house. You would have to put in lead walls or uh, null metal. You would have to, you cannot believe this, this is not, you, you either have to stop mm -hmm. it, period, which you can't. It's not possible mm -hmm. because this is a big industry. This is a new world coming at us. And the one thing I will point out that a lot of people have got, I, I've been, I, I spent 30 years in that industry and I know everything about it, but there's so many people out there that they get a meter and they go out and say, oh my God, you know, you're home, this and that and, and whatever, and scare everybody to death. They yeah. scare everybody. And, and, and for $1,200, I will measure everything. I'll tell you everything that needs to be fixed. And then for $20,000, I'll get the power company out. We'll go do all these things and get all these things fixed so that you're protected, which it is yep. not going to solve your problem. So this is a fear-based group of people. And I, not, I don't want to take anything away from them because it is good to do what they do, but they, they, you know, they attack earthing. They, they attack us a lot because they yeah. want to, they put fear in our customers so that our customers will go to them and say, oh my God, I can't ground because these guys said I'm going to die. I'm going to get cancer. Well, that's all craziness. That's just guerrilla marketing. <laughs> and, you know, I can't do anything about it. So that's so, why I tell, go ahead. Yeah, so, so, so 5D cannot jump conduct onto a, a sheet that's either plugged in the, the mains that, that is, or- that, that is absolute unbridled nonsense. Yay! <laughs> you know, it, it's like it's like an electric field. It's a field. It's a wave in the in the air, and it goes from the source to infinity. If you turn a light switch on in your home, there'll be a spike, and it'll be vast. Mm -hmm. But that spike will create an electric field in your environment, and it will go to infinity. It will go past Pluto to the edge of the universe. That's the way electric fields work. So, <clears throat> if you can the only way you can prevent that electric field is you have to turn off the source mm -hmm. uh, with low i mean uh, low frequencies and so on it's easy you ground yourself and then it bounces off the body uh, otherwise you have to use i mean the skin it's not going into your body i mean it's it's it, let me put it this way um, the sun is the most um, dangerous EMF, I guess, mm -hmm. because, you know, most people don't realize there's no heat coming from the sun. If you go up on a mountain, you stand up, put your arm up, it's cold underneath the sun. As you come down, then it starts to warm up. So what's happening is sun, I mean, radiation from the sun, like radiation from anything is coming. And what it does is when it hits your skin, then it vibrates molecules and creates yeah. heat creates friction creates heat that's how we experience warmth <laughs> and but out there it's cold yeah and so everybody's kind of you know it's how nature works how the world works how everything and we're learning more and more every day it's just phenomenal but it's different than what we think you know the um but so that's why i like to go tell everybody to start out as simple as possible yeah. You need you need to learn what grounding is. Go outdoors. And yeah. when it's cold and below zero and there's ice and snow and everything, uh, that's a problem. So find a place where the sun hits the sidewalk, shovel the snow off, it will warm up, it will melt the snow and it will melt the ice. And then take your chair and just sit there or sit there on the stoop with a blank blanket over your legs with your bare feet mm -hmm. on the concrete. Do things but you know, in the summer, it's wonderful. Just go outdoors and spend time outdoors. But yeah. <clears throat> if you have a basement that has a concrete basement, then um, go down there and find yourself a little place to make a little grounding area, um, warm bath. But do these things, do the simplest things so that you know, and then start out with the least expensive thing you need 
to ground yourself a universal mat that I think they're as low as $59 or something like that. Wow. Yes. And, um, and wristbands and various things. And sometimes you get two for the price of one on earthing.com and so on. But anyhow, start out the least expense. Don't go and spend a lot of money until you uh, know what you want to do and know what you need to do, but learn what you need to do. But so, the, and if you're concerned about EMFs, then start mm -hmm. unplugging electrical devices in your home. Yeah. But be but be aware. The biggest problem with EMFs in the average home is when they build a house, they put two by fours up and down. If it's a wallboard house, and then they waste high to an electrician. They go through and drill the holes, run the electrical wires up and down to the outlets and back and forth. So then you put the wallboard up. You put you bring your bed in, put it up against the wall, put your pillows up at the head, and so you're sleeping with your your head six inches from. Uh, you know, a bundle of Romax electrical wires. So if you have a concern, that's the concern. Rip the walls out and do that. It's not practical. You can't do it. But you mm -hmm. can unplug things. You can, but you can't. You have to have safety. You can unplug uh, circuits in your home if you want to put in some DC lighting or some other lighting. You can do all kinds of things. But to think that you're going to shield yourself from EMF, I mean, or from radio frequencies, mm -hmm. that's nonsense because... Yeah. You're living where you're living right now. I guarantee, you, if you're in the city, there's 10,000 cell phone frequencies that are the soup that you're living in is just full of all these frequencies, and it well, does. Can I, can I ask you though? No, f finish that sentence because people would get mad at me if you were not allowed to finish that sentence. So, the frequencies well, it, we escape. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like um, they they are an environmental stressor. I guarantee you. But if you are grounded and you have a good, strong immune system, any damage they do, your immune system will clean it up and clean it up quickly. But I if don't. you, yeah. So it's really, you know, find your spot back in nature, but don't try to do, you know, the first thing you have to stop the inflammation in your body. Then you have to stop the cause. So grounding, then you, first of all, mental, because mental stress, yeah. mental, mental coyotes, that is the number one thing that feeds. You know, food is next, bad foods, all these things. Uh, but mm -hmm. the immune system can, can do so much, even with bad food. Uh, but you, we need to put things in order because everybody's selling, trying to sell you something. Yeah, I'm not, exactly. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm too old. I'm past that. I'm 75. I don't need it anymore. What What is important is our children. Yeah. And, and the moms, because I they're taking that. care of their, they're taking care of their moms and they're taking care of this yeah. next generation. And we have to yeah. put all of our energy into the next generation. I Make agree make the older generation comfortable but leave them alone because they're going to get grounded soon enough but our children and, uh, and this whole because there's a lot of fear mongering around um, cities i've heard people say well we there's nowhere no nowhere left in the u.s where you can safely ground unless it's deserted beaches and very few states so i guess you don't agree with that as well we we have over a million people grounded in the United States in the last 10 years. Yes, we I don't we, we don't have a they don't have dead bodies stacked up here, over on this you know, on the corner. What they do have, we have a lot of death from autoimmune disease, inflammation related health disorders, cancer, MS, lupus, and all of these things. Uh, mm -hmm. We got to get real here. We're not trying to sell you a widget or a black box, or to come into your home and or to tell you you can't ground you have to you have to go to your death with autoimmune disease that yeah. is nonsense that's yeah. that's irresponsible i um, love that you say that can you um can you um because this is i think we've been around most of the topics that i wanted to talk about i also i'm going to link to all of the web pages that's linked to your uh, movies and where to get hold on these grounding tools mm -hmm. but can you just mention something called the gt throw what is that what's that all about <clears throat> that's a ground therapy throw and in fact there i think they're on sale this weekend somebody was telling me for, two for the price of one at earthing.com or groundtherapy.com and uh it's a blanket uh it's a, um, an organic cotton face and it has silver uh, conductors in it I wish I had one to throw, show you, but you can go online and look at them. Um, <clears throat> and so it's just a nice, comfortable blanket. It's it's a throw that you can wrap around yourself. 
when you're watching TV or whatever and be grounded. It's really great for children. Um, and uh, it's good for using as a blanket during sleep, the silver side yeah. against or laying on when you're sleeping a lot of a lot of, it's just a throw that people use for a variety of reasons um but again the that's what the ladies like everybody prefers that it's a little more expensive but <clears throat> what i prefer is getting a um the same thing the gt um, black sleep mats they're relatively inexpensive yeah. but they're going to last forever and and that you put them under yeah. the sheet and you're just going to get benefits forever without doing anything. That's the main thing I like about grounding. If you do it right, do it in a way so you don't, you know, it doesn't take any extra work. It doesn't take yeah. any extra cost. It doesn't take, you know, you want your life back. And that's what I hear most of all from, from these moms is, thank you, I got my life back. I hear that. I mean, if I don't hear that once a week, I get, what's going on? I'm not doing something right. But anyhow, yeah. it's, it's really about, Helping people get their life back, but do it in do it in you know, doing it in a way that's affordable. You have to give them a, a, a no cost solution and a low cost solution. Then, if you got lots of money and you got your health back, then go and spend twenty thousand dollars on the uh, EMF mitigation guys and have them come and tear your walls up and your redo your lamps and do everything that they need to do. But it's not. I mean, put things in order. Get your priorities in order. It's yourself, your your child. And if you have to live in a tent, that's better than putting up with all this nonsense. I really love that. And that brings us at this kind of full circle because we started with the native, the indigenous people and how they've always known the animals know. So yes. returning to nature where we come from and reconnect to it. And I hear the same stories that you are hearing mm -hmm. by telling moms to do what you're preaching. So thank yes. you so much for the work that you do really from yeah. the bottom of my heart, you're making it. You, this is a revolution and it's a remembering, it's a reconnecting. It's, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not something new, it's something old. And mm -hmm. we just got lost when we discovered plastics and the lights and television and you know, the 60s on, we, we just lost contact with nature. We, we forgot thank who we were. Exactly. <laughs> So thank you so much, Ken Oba. And where can people find you, except for in the show notes, I'm, I'll make sure to think. So where can they find you online? Uh, they find me online at uh, Clint Ober Facebook. And I, I post all of the, any articles that come up, anything comes up, I always post there. Uh, earthinginstitute.net. Um, you can ask any questions. Uh, we have lots of studies. All the studies are posted there. Uh, but we're mainly a resource for question and answers and uh, reports. Um, the uh, the thing I'd like to share is the Earthing movie, which is available free on YouTube, and Beautiful. there's no commercial no commercial interruption, and it's free, and it speaks to these young moms that I'm talking about, mm -hmm. and the schools and so on. Um, I wish that we could have done more, but we had to keep it kind of narrow, and but it's very covers the essence of grounding very well yeah i can really recommend that i've been uh, watching that with my teenage sons to explain to them why uh -huh. why we are outside every day grounding which we are so <laughs> awesome <laughs> thank you so so much and i know you are the one that people have been asking to to hear from for so long so this would be so exciting for so many people oh, to great listen. Yeah, and, and anybody has questions, let let us know, let me know, um, and I'm totally available to support what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Clint. Okay. Happy, happy earthing, happy grounding. Thank you. <laughs> Namaste. Bye.